sent in another operative to be hired by the company I was working at to get close to us and embed himself into our lives. And his name was Faris Khan. And uh, he was a Pakistani-American uh, that we hired at the company. And before too long, he was friends with myself and all of the other people that we worked with, okay? And this turned out to be coincidental at the same time that the Lisa McPherson case was going on. And uh, Bob Minton, who was a, a vocal critic of Scientology, was speaking out about Scientology and, and, and spending a lot of money. So he was sent in basically to keep an eye on us. And that's, that's what was going on at the time. What happened then was I was going to go down to Clearwater in 19, uh, sorry, 2000. I was going to go to Clearwater and visit Bob Minton and the Lisa McPherson Trust because they had invited me down there to see them. Well, David Miscavige got wind of this and told people that I was not to be go anywhere near Florida and that uh, I was not to step foot into the state. So I was, what happened was is they used this operative, Ferris Khan, to divert me on a trip to Mexico, to Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Uh, on that trip, uh, it was set up where we were going to do business with this wealthy investor who we were going to meet down there and that why that's why it was more important we go there than go to Florida. I agreed to go to the trip. On that trip, uh, Ferris Khan took me out and we went out to various strip clubs and nightclubs and activities and during that time he surreptitiously was filming me uh, you know, with women and, and receiving uh, table dances and that type of thing which he then reported back uh, to David Miscavige and Scientology that they could then use supposedly as blackmail material against me. So you never showed up for the Lisa McPherson trial? That's correct. I never showed up for that and uh, so I would have thought, I didn't know at the time, but um, I would have thought that you know they would have called off Ferris Khan, but they didn't do that. He continued to be a part of my life to the point where he became my best friend and he was the person I spoke to and consulted with most. We speak on the phone at least two or three times a day, sometimes more, about everything from politics, uh, religion, finances, you name it, business, you name it. And he was doing a daily report to Miscavige. It turns out, I later world. found out that that's what he was doing. He was reporting everything that I was saying or doing to Miscavige. And then <clears throat> What happened in, then in the mid-2000s, um, all of a sudden, Scientologists who had left Scientology were starting to speak out more and more on the Internet. And I uh, got hooked up with a group on the Internet and started reconnecting with old friends and sharing stories. Well, the next thing I know, my business contacts are being uh, approached saying, investigating me, saying that I was committing fraud and I was doing all these terrible things. And it turned out the, the person that was behind it was Ferris Khan because he, he had reported up that I was meeting with these people and that they basically were trying to scare me off so that I would shut up and not say anything on the internet anymore by trying to negatively influence my business. Mark, isn't it incredulous to you that a so-called tax-free religion isn't espionage, infiltrating, retaliating, biting back on you, interfering with business comments? Doesn't this, doesn't, how is this religious? How is this ecclesiastical? I don't understand it. Does this make sense? I don't understand it because I wasn't doing anything wrong, you know, and, and there, was, there should be no interest in what I'm doing. The only reason that I can think of that they would do such a thing is if they have their own crimes and things that they're trying to hide, which I think David Miscavige knows what that is. So, did you ever confront Ferris Khan on being a, a David Miscavige spy? I did. I finally confirmed that, the, that he had spied on me and, and that this occurred, and I ended up speaking out to the Tampa Bay Times in their Truth Rundown series. And what happened was, is I waited until that series was actually being about to be published, and then I sent uh, Ferris Khan an email saying, you're going to be interested in seeing these stories tomorrow. 
uh, after he uh, saw the stories, he contacted me and he tried to blame me for everything and wouldn't acknowledge the fact when I asked him the question, I have a simple question for you. Did Scientology or anyone connected with Scientology pay you to spy on me and to reveal the details of my life to Scientology or anyone else? And he refused to even answer that question with a yes or a no or even a maybe. He just would dodge the question, which his silence said million, you know, said everything. It told me everything, and um, yeah, the harassment and everything stopped as soon as he was revealed. Mm. Yeah. And he just faded into the sunset once you called him on as being a Scientology spy in your I, life. What I hadn't heard from him until just about six months ago when he emailed me and said that he was in Las Vegas. He didn't have my phone number any longer and that he, it was very important that he needed to see me. Um, I refused to see him and he asked me why I wouldn't see him and that's when I told him the story about my sister dying. And he was intimately involved in gathering material to try and blackmail me to keep me silent and also was intimately involved through that in getting my sister to disconnect from my mother. So I wanted to make sure that he understood that I knew what happened and, and wanted to know, I wanted him to know what the results of his actions were. It's really a bitter pill when someone you consider your closest best friend, your confidant, was really a snake in the grass. Uh, it's, I tell people this story and they find it, they, they go, how, how do you feel about that? And I tell them, it's amazing. I've never heard anything like it. It's you know they go well. How can you still trust people? And I say, I, I it is hard. It's hard to trust people after something like this goes on. But what I try to do is rely on the family and friends who have been around me for the longest period of time, and uh, that gets me through it.